Good day, everyone, and welcome back to another educational video from Mr. Stitt. Today, our topic is Texas Academic Response Paragraphs. And like this image to the right, a big ice cream from Texas, we're going to learn how to write big, strong academic response paragraphs using the acronym TEXAS. So let's jump right into it. So what is a Texas paragraph? What is it exactly? When you think of the word Texas, I want you to break down the letters and think about the sentences in your academic response paragraph. So when you answer an academic question, you must answer using Texas. Here's what the academic or the uh, here's what the acronym stands for. T stands for topic sentence. E stands for evidence. X stands for explain. A stands for analyze. And S stands for summarize. So as you're answering a question in Mr. Sitt's class, or maybe you get a prompt on some sort of end-of-the-year test that you need to write a long extended response for, you need to be thinking about Texas. Each sentence in your paragraph represents a letter in the acronym. So let's jump right into it. Let's look at each letter individually. First, T stands for topic sentence. Topic sentence. So the topic sentence is the first sentence of the paragraph. It always directly answers the question from the prompt using keywords. So that's an important part. You need to use keywords or restate your answer using keywords from the paragraph or from the prompt that you were given. And your paragraph needs to develop your claim that you make right here in this topic sentence. So the topic sentence is very, very important. You take keywords from the prompt and you develop it into your thesis or your topic sentence. So again, in the topic sentence, you need to look for keywords that are found in the prompt before you start writing. Make sure you isolate the question. Figure out in the simplest way what the question is actually asking. Figure out what the question is asking by looking for those keep words. What are words you're going to keep from the topic, um, from the actual prompt that you're given? For instance, let's look at this example down below. What if you get an essay that has the prompt, and this, this is a very easy prompt, but what if you got, what part of Florida do you live in? You need to think about this question, what part of Florida do you live in, and what are some words that are key that you want to keep in your topic sentence? We're going to call this a quancer, or the question that you turn into your answer. So your topic sentence might look like this. I live in the northern part of Florida. I took the keep words part, Florida, live, and in, and I turned them into my topic sentence. I live in northern part of Florida. So I'm taking the prompt. I'm turning that question into an answer or a quancer, and I'm making it my topic sentence. So let's look at the letter E in Texas. E stands for evidence. Once you have answered the question using the keyboard strategy, you need to back it up with evidence. Now, evidence should be pulled directly from the text and be clear and concise. This is where you are using the author's thoughts and words from, a, from maybe a book, magazine, or short article that you've read. You need to back up your topic sentence with evidence. Evidence must be introduced with transition words followed by a comma. Next, evidence must be properly cited with the author's name and line, paragraph, or page number on which you found that evidence. You must be precise here, otherwise you're going to be guilty of committing plagiarism. So here's a great example of evidence cited in your paper. According to, according to the text, the class rocked Texas writing. Now this was found in the article Stitt on page 1. So you see how I've used a transition word according to the text. I've used this transition phrase, and I've also quoted the author's words, not mine, by putting quotation marks around the evidence. And I've also cited where I found the evidence. I found it in Stitt. He's the author of the article, and it's on page one. These are in parentheses. This is how you properly cite evidence. Now let's look again at another example of good evidence citing. According to the text, there's my source, or there's my transition words that I'm using, and then here's my quote in parentheses, that way I'm giving credit to the author's words. The class rocked Texas writing, stit number one. The quotation indicates that you are no longer using your words, but now you're using the author's words, and the quotation gives credit to the author, 
not you. This is not your words, this is the author's words. Notice that there's no punctuation at the end of the evidence. Okay, so when I say stit one, I'm not putting a comma, I'm just citing whoever the author was and then quoting the page number. That is how you correctly cite evidence for your written response. Now let's go into the X. The X is probably one of the more important parts of your written response, and that is to explain. You need to explain the evidence that you just quoted. In this part of the paragraph, you will put the evidence in your own words. So yes, you've quoted the evidence. Yes, you put it in parentheses. Yes, you've given Mr. Stitt the exact author and page number, but you need to kind of summarize or explain it in your own words. Do this to simplify the evidence and to show that you understand the evidence. So you might quote a long passage from an article, but you need to now summarize it and restate it again in your own words. This helps the reader understand that you know what you're talking about and what the evidence means. Be sure to use transition words again to show that you are rewording or simplifying a point from an article. Next. This is the trickiest part of your writing, and it's A for analyze. This is where you go below the surface. This is where you really use your brain, and you analyze. Uh, what analyze means is to look critically at all parts of the text and to examine how they work together. So now you're taking the quote that you just used, and you're trying to make deeper meaning out of it. You're trying to make a connection to other things that you've read. You're trying to help the reader of your written response make bigger connections to the world around them. This is where you make connections and you tell your reader how they should think or what they should now consider to be important. This is very, very tricky, but with practice, you'll really be able to do this well. Now here's a one way to analyze. Think about showing the importance of the quote with respect to your argument and your thesis. Explain the significance. Why is this quote so important? Tell the reader why they bothered to read your essay. This is where you tie in your thoughts together with a nice bow. Look at this example below. Think about the, the play Macbeth. I just read the play and now I'm trying to analyze or make connections or tell you why the quote that I use is so important. I might say, here Macbeth realizes that his pitiful existence from the moment he decided to kill King Duncan to the moment when his beloved wife killed herself has been consumed by his reckless ambition. This directly shows the damaging power of ambition. If Macbeth had been content with his previous title, which was prestigious enough, a host of tragedy would have been avoided. So in this example, I'm using the play Macbeth, but I'm going deeper below the surface. I'm talking about how power hunger can actually lead to destruction. I'm trying to make a, con a connection between a character's actions and a theme that we might be able to apply in real life. I'm analyzing the quote, and I'm going below the surface. Now, last but not least, the S is very, very important in your written response. S stands for summary. Now, this is the end of your paragraph, the very, very end, and it should repeat your claim or your thesis, or what we learned to be the T or topic sentence, in different words or summarize your overall paragraph. It should not contain evidence or any sort of new information. So a summary, you're just pretty much restating your thesis. You're telling your reader what you just told us in a very concise way. A summary. So let's review. What did we learn about today? What is a Texas paragraph? When you're answering an academic question or some sort of question that comes from a prompt, you must answer using Texas. If you answer using Texas, you'll be sure that it's a high quality answer. T stands for topic sentence, E stands for evidence, X stands for explain, A stands for analyze, and S stands for summarize. These are the things that will ensure that your next written response to a prompt is high quality. Thanks so much for joining us. I hope to see you next time. Bye.